Hello everyone and welcome to Teaching Kyle Kalinske Marxism Episode 2. Uh, today we're going to look at a video that Kyle did uh, talking about how Biden passed up the opportunity uh, to push for a bill that would allow the U.S. government to uh, negotiate with pharmaceutical companies in order to lower drug prices. Uh, he didn't want Medicare to be able to negotiate with pharmaceutical companies, which drives prices down. This is something that happens in European countries and Scandinavian countries. It's very common in social democracies, um, which obviously Kyle is a fan of, but it's something that we don't have here in the United States because our country is even more of a corrupt oligarchy than uh, the European countries or uh, Scandinavian countries. Um, so let's watch Kyle's analysis here and then I'm going to talk about where I agree and then where I would take my analysis further and where I think Kyle needs to go. All right, let's go. This little gem. You can see the highlighted portion here. Despite pressure from Democratic leadership, White House officials are also prepared to table a measure they had included in earlier drafts aimed at reducing consumer and government spending on prescription drugs, a measure fiercely opposed by the pharmaceutical industry, the people said. So you know what that means? Joe Biden, just like the president before him and the president before him, uh, is caving on having Medicare negotiate for better drug prices, having the federal government negotiate for better drug prices. See, the way it works now is other countries negotiate with pharma to get better prices. And, you know, other countries generally have uh, national health care systems, so the government negotiates on behalf of the citizenry and they get decent prices. Um, and the U.S. has a provision that the government cannot negotiate with pharma for better prices. So in other words, whatever pharma says to pay, the U.S. pays. Now, we get insanely screwed with this being the case because oftentimes what happens is foreign governments get really good deals on the drugs, and so pharma tries to make all their profits by hosing us here. And so that's why you have just completely out of control drug prices in this country. It's one of the reasons why you have completely out of control drug prices. And every administration comes in saying, federal government is going to negotiate for better drug prices. And every single time they cave. Now, why? Why is that? Listen, I honestly think it's a naive position if you believe they just hear out the arguments and make the objective decision that it's better to just leave the American people getting price gouged. Um, I think the reality of it is special interests and lobbyists get their ear and pharma donates a tremendous amount of money to both political parties. And so really at the end of the day, they say, we own you, we control you. And that's why they end up acting in the best interest of pharma and against the best interest of the American people. So there you go. There's Kyle's analysis there. Um, and as far as this issue, this is one of those technocratic sort of liberal issues or social democratic issues, I guess you could say, that I actually think is worth fighting for and worth pushing for, right? I think um, that if there's a chance that an administration or that a government, even within our you know liberal democracy, our capitalist, imperialist oligarchy that we live in, want to push um, to allow the government to negotiate for lower drug prices, I think we should push for that. You know, because I'm a working class person, um, I want my medicine to be cheaper, um, and more importantly, I know vulnerable people all around me who are working class people who struggle to afford things like insulin um, and important medicine. So, of course, this is something I think that we should push for. However, listen to what Kyle says here about the systemic issues, right? He, he says, he makes this argument, um, the politicians are not looking at things objectively, right? They're looking at whoever their donors are, whoever their lobbyists are, and that's what they're deciding to do. Whatever will make the pharma pharmaceutical companies and the healthcare companies who are paying for their campaigns and paying for the politicians advertising, um, they're going to see their will done in Washington. I um, mean, Kyle says, you're naive, if you think that these politicians are thinking about things objectively. Um, and yes, I would agree. You would have to be insanely naive if you've paid attention to politics at all and you think that politicians are not controlled by lobbyists. And Kyle, this is my argument to you. I think at this point, you would have to be naive to think that liberal democracy can even work at all, right? To think that the state 
the government will not always become a tool of the capitalist class for the increase or the, the raising of their own profits at the expense of the proletariat, the working class. Um, if you don't think that's what liberal democracy or even social democracies transform into every time, I think you're being naive, right? I mean, what's your end goal here, right? What's your end solution that eventually one day we're going to elect enough AOCs, we're going to get enough Alexandria Ocasio-Cortezes in Congress to the point where we can push for a bill that allows the government to negotiate for lower insulin prices or whatever. I mean, that is an extremely, extremely, extremely low bar, right? All this work and all this effort and all this um, blood, sweat, and tears put forward by organizers to get people like AOC and get these progressives elected to Congress for what? The end goal of having Medicare negotiate for slightly lower drug prices while the United States continues to be an imperialist power extracting resources and murdering hundreds of thousands of people all around the world um, for the increasing profits of a handful of people? I mean, that's ultimately the end goal of social democracy, right? To continue all these horrible things, um, with with the added benefit of now we can afford medicine or maybe now workers are uh, have slightly higher wages. I mean, in every video, Kyle seems so angry and so surprised that all these things are happening, right? How can our horrible, rancid government not even fight for lower drug prices for workers in the midst of a pandemic? How immoral. Yeah, of course it's immoral, but like you said, they don't care about the morality. They don't think about the morality. And this is how liberal democracy works. This is how Marx, Engels, and Lenin predicted that liberal democracy would work and observed that liberal democracy would work. When you have a handful of capitalists, um, whether they're from the pharmaceutical industry or wherever else who own the press and they can lobby the government and they can dump money into the education system um, to make sure that you're learning what they want you to learn, um, you don't have a real democracy. You're not going to have a real government that works for people or works rationally, right? You're going to look at the government and be like, this is entirely irrational. No, it's not irrational. It's the fact that the pharmaceutical companies and the capitalist class own the state anytime you have a government that exists in a capitalist system, right? When you look at these European countries or Scandinavian countries, they're still supporting imperialism. Um, most of their people still work 10 hours a day for the capitalist class, maybe they're unionized and they're pushing for shorter work weeks and stuff, which is good. That's what we call class struggle. Um, but at the end of the day, they're still imperialist nations where the vast majority of their people um, work all day for the enrichment of a handful of people who own. Is that really the system you want to advocate for? Is that really the system that you look at and say, oh, we just need minor tweaks here, right? Once we get enough AOCs and Ilhan Omars in Congress, we can make some minor tweaks. Um, people won't be dying anymore because they can't afford insulin um, and then everything will work out. No, it's a completely broken system that is completely controlled by the capitalist class. Kyle clearly recognizes this. He understands that lobbyists own the government. Um, so what's the solution then? The solution is to abolish the system via class struggle, right? And I like fighting these political battles and Kyle formed Justice Democrats, which I think was admirable. But again, the whole goal of Justice Democrats was just to elect a lot of uncorrupted politicians and hopefully they fight for us. Right when, when in reality, what we need first is economic organization, organization on the ground, organization of the masses, so the masses can start to wield power and make demands, start to threaten withholding our labor power unless the capitalist class and the state does what we want, and then we need to come to control the state. That could mean through elections, right? That doesn't necessarily mean marching on the capital and seizing the state, um, but what we need first is class struggle and economic organization. And with Kyle, um, with somebody like him who understands that the state state is controlled by the rich, um, and understands U.S. imperialism, and understands that even the tiniest little things, like getting the government to negotiate with big pharma um, in order to lower the drug prices for, for the working masses, are things that we can't get in our liberal democracy because the state is not something that's there to make objective decisions. It's something that's controlled by the rich, and this is a function of liberal democracy or even most social democracy. All right, I changed hats for this part of the video to tell Kyle why Marxism then? Why should you give up social democracy and come to Marxism? I got two reasons for you. One, Marxism and socialism seeks to take the giant banks and the giant um, industrial capitalists and the military industrial complex and take them from the hands of the capitalist class and move them into the hands of the people, right? We believe and we know that capitalists, oligarchs, run the government. They control the state, right? It's not the state that controls us. Uh, that is what libertarians believe. Libertarians believe the political class and the government and the state cannot be used for anything good. 
Marxists believe the state could be used for something good, but it is controlled by the capitalist class. Therefore, workers need to take the state and use it to move um, capital and uh, uh, the, the major industry and major banks into the hands of the workers so they can no longer um, force us to do things like imperialism and exploit the working masses. Um, this is how you stop imperialism. Imperialism is going to happen if you tax corporations more, right? If you, if you have labor unions, imperialism is still going to happen. That's called what Lenin called opportunism. In order to stop U.S. imperialism and all the horrific things that we see the government and the state do, you need to, you need to take uh, banks and industry and move them into the hands of the workers, and this can be done using the state. Um, and, and in re reference in relation to the pharmaceutical companies, same exact thing, right? These pharmaceutical companies have a stranglehold on our government. Um, they are owned by the capitalist class. We need to take pharmaceutical companies and make them public. Um, allow those workers to, to those, those engineers and those doctors who are actually creating the medicine and those scientists who are actually creating the medicine that saves lives. Um, they now run the organization. They get paid a lot better. And those who are sitting on top of the organization, not putting in any labor, um, not putting, making any scientific advancements, just collecting profit because they happen to own shares or stocks in that company, they go bye-bye. We get rid of them. That is Marxism. And then two, Marxism gives us an actual path forward. It gives us the path of class struggle, of economic organization. So we're not just sitting here for, you know, 10 to 15 years or however long Kyle's been doing his show saying, oh man, the government sure is bad. They sure are corrupt. They sure are run by lobbyists. No, instead, you go to your working friends, you go to your working class buddies, and you organize them. You organize them, um, and, and you commit to doing class struggle, economic organization, because the working class, without our labor, the capitalist class has nothing. You know, their whole grift, the whole grift of capitalism relies on the masses working for the enrichment of a minority of people. So if the masses are to organize, um, they have all the power. Right. It's the movie Ants. When the ants at the end realize that they have all the power, um, that the big, bad, uh, whatever those big mean bugs are in the movie Ants that are supposed to represent the capitalists, that they don't actually have any power when all the ants team up and they overthrow them. That's basically Marxism. That's basically get to the masses, organize them, seize state power um, and use state power to take uh, the power from the capitalist class and put it into the hands of the workers. And that's the only thing that's going to stop this rancid system, this horrific system where where we can't even get insulin prices lowered uh, because pharmaceutical companies are profiting too much off of it. So yeah, that's why you should be a Marxist, Kyle. I'm going to keep going with this series until uh, you post the reading guide of Das Capital volumes one through three. Okay, solidarity with everyone. Peace out.